Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another HD broadcast. And today I am very, very proud to bring you guys a game that was very highly recommended on the stream that I did a couple of days ago. This is actually the game that I broadcasted right after the games I played against Dopa. So people are already going crazy about my game versus Dopa and the close, you know, Nidus Worms and all that good stuff. And then we had, we were blessed with this game, the game between Broom and Waffles. And uh, everybody on livestream, I think at this point we had like 1,200 viewers or so, everyone was just going ballistic. They pretty much harassed me. You guys pretty much harassed me to rebroadcast this game, put, it, put my commentary on it, and bring it live over over YouTube and of course uh, I'm gonna do it I mean I, I thought it was a great game as well so I'm very excited to be bringing this game to you guys uh, it is going to be a Zerg versus Terran as you guys already see sitting the obvious but um what was I gonna say oh yeah I just finished packing for BlizzCon I have my towel my toothbrush my contact lens and Hopefully all the clothes I need for BlizzCon, and yeah, that's everything I need. Uh, I just want to let you guys know that I'm going to be driving up to Sacramento tonight, and then I'll be driving all the way down to Anaheim, so it's going to be an uber long drive. So uh, I thought I'd go ahead and cast this game, precast it, and then upload it while I'm gone in the uh, southern heat of LA. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this game. I, I definitely enjoyed it when it was live streamed, and I think it's going to be a very, very big blast to cast it's gonna be a blast cast and uh, the players waffles a very good Terran player I had the pleasure of playing a couple of games with him he is I believe an 1800 rated as Terran so uh, a very very good Terran player very impressed by his play uh, whenever whenever I've seen him play and broom I've never really seen him play before but I did check brooms rank he is an 1800 rated Zerg so, uh, yeah, very, very good Zerg player, obviously, and I think this is going to be a very high-level game. Uh, do note right now, Broom has gone for a 14-hatch, 14-pool, and uh, really, Zerg players nowadays, you can go for this as a Zerg. Why? Because th this, by the way, is post-patch, and you can go for this as Zerg because now Terran players cannot go for that early Reaper harass anymore. And so, as a Zerg, it's very safe to go 14-hatch, which is pretty much the most economical opening you can possibly go for as a Zerg player. The most economical and, you know, not saying, you know, come attack me now and kill me. Uh, a 14 hash 14 pull is pretty safe against Terran, and you can see that Broom is going to be using that to his fullest advantage here. Uh, throwing down that early hatchery. Now, Waffles is going to be going for a factory. Uh, cannot be going for Reapers anymore like he like he used to be able to do as a Terran player. Now you have to kind of go for factory and, I mean, honestly, Reapers, I think, are going to be an extinct breed because you need factory to get the Nitro Packs upgrade and without Nitro Packs, they're kind of bad and plus Roaches now can range against Reapers, so I don't know. I, I don't think we'll be, ever really see Reapers used again. But uh, because of that, we do have Waffles going for Hellions here. Uh, he has not yet grabbed the second gas, so it does seem like he's going to be going for uh, early harass with Hellions and Marines and possibly going to try to get an early expansion out as well. Not going to be taken up to Starport anytime soon. And looks like the drone there just seeing the couple Marines. I, I do believe it saw the factory. Yes, it did. So here comes the Hellions, and indeed we do have a command center being built for the Terran player. So Waffles going to be harassing with his Hellion at the same time going to be securing an expansion. Picks off one drone, the scouting drone. And uh, let's see how much damage this Hellion can do. Uh, flame on wheels. Here we go. Going to go straight into the natural spine crawler on the way. But oh man. Oh, Waff Broom could lose a lot of his drones here. I'm actually stuttering because I see four drones stacked up. Oh no. On the ramp. Two of them getting roasted. A third one going down as well. Not good at all for Broom. And he could possibly lose the final drone. He does lose the fourth one. So we can see on the income tab, Zerg player now falling behind the enemy Terran. But they are just catching up and evening out. So um, it looks like Broom is really focusing down on, wow, seven drones, six drones, five drones on the way on the production tab. Uh, that's a lot of drones. So Broom here obviously really focusing down on macro. Even though he just got harassed by Hellions, he's not too deterred. He's making a handful of links and he's going to rely on this single spine crawler to make sure that his frontal wall doesn't get breached uh, any uh, again. So... If we look on that income tab, Zerg player once again ahead of the Terran, 27 over 21, good macro from uh, from Broom, but here he's going to lose all of his lings, except for three. So those three Hellions doing some more very, very massive damage, 
And Broom here has got to be careful. If he doesn't get some units to block off this ramp, those Hellions could very well easily run right by and get into the main. Uh, we have two factories going up for Waffles, and it looks like his frontal expansion now going up. Oh man, the Hellions just are sneaking in. One Hellion gets picked off, and Waffles now could do a lot of damage. He's going straight into the mineral line. How many drones is he going to get? Broom here gotta be careful don't stack up your drones broom or you're in a lot of trouble he has a roach warren coming out the two hellions picking off all resistance all the links have fallen and now the drones right for the pickings how many drones is waffles gonna get the drones pulling off the line to try to deal with the hellion harass and the flamethrower is just doing obscene amounts of damage there goes three drones there goes a fourth drone and more drones could potentially go down at massive casualties here we have level three burns all over the creep and it looks like wow maybe seven or eight drones getting taken out there waffles picking off another drone and almost gets two more holy good god i think waffles right there just launched himself way ahead in this game 27 over 22 but my goodness broom there you guys just saw five drones on the production tab so broom is not deterred he is just mass pumping drones and just like that he's right back on the terran's tail in terms of economy 28 over 27 so really a uh, kind of impressive play right here from broom but at the same time very risky knowing that the enemy terran is teching up he's on three factories he's getting his armory down and more hellions on the way he has a very measly defense and as a result the hellions have exploited that they've killed off so many drones um, but this time around, it looks like the two Roaches and the Queen should be able to defend off any more further Hellion Harass. So, Broom here, not doing all that bad. I mean, he's lost a lot of drones, but you guys can see that he's pumping out so many that he really does make up for it. Now he's 37 over 33. This is such brilliant play from Broom. He's actually catching up. He's now surpassed the Terran in economy. But uh, in terms of army count, I've got to say that most likely Waffle's way ahead. Um, well, not really the case. He's actually pretty much right even with the with the Zerg. And Waffles really just has a bunker to defend against the three Roaches. Here comes the Roaches. How much damage is Broom going to be able to do? Trying to make a counterattack happen here. And it looks like he is going to encounter the bunker and he is going to fall back. And here comes the two tanks ready to roll out, sieging down, uh, coming down the ramp. Is siege mode ready yet, I wonder? Not quite yet, although, wait, there it is. Siege mode on the way. So, Waffles is going to be transitioning into some kind of a siege mech play here. And he is going to be getting uh, Thors out as well, I would assume, thanks to the armory, early armory. And as a response, we do have a Spire coming down from Broom. And I do like this. When, whenever you're a Zerg player and the enemy Terran goes for mechanized units such as tanks or Thors or even tanks and Hellions, Mutalisks are so good against that because they can abuse the lack of mobility of the Terran mech army, they can pick off Hellions and tanks very easily, and they can also pick off Thors quite easily as well. Even uh, as long as you use the Mutalis magic box trick, then you can pick off Thors quite easily. So I do like this decision from Broom. He's uh, really not looking all that bad as w at all. His economy, 54 over 40. Wow, considering he's lost all those drones in the beginning, this is just an absolute miracle. Um, I am very impressed by the Zerg player's play right now. Making all these drones, he's ahead of the Terran. He's getting Baneling's Nest as well. They're just morphing in. So he is getting Muta Baneling, which is the proper composition against the Terran army, Terran Mech Bio. And it uh, looks like he even loses his two Hellions on this Zelnaga Watchtower, uh, and, uh, Waffles does. So Broom, doing well, controlling the map. And now pushing out with his spine crawlers, he even might take this gold expansion very, very soon. I've got to say, Waffles here, even though he killed off so many drones, his advantage might not be that much ahead, if at all. Um, in terms of army count, we can see that they're both at 89 supply, and the Zerg army still has a little bit more in terms of harvesters. So I really do think that Waffles is looking uh, kind of behind right now. Broom is going to be defending against these marines, going to pick off all three very easily. And just like that, the Zerg army now starts to switch its technology route over to Muta Baneling. We have Centrifugal Hooks on the way, that all-important upgrade, which makes Zergling so much easy, or the Baneling so much easier to strike and land on the Marine Bioballs. And we do have that gold expansion going up. So, uh, we'll see what happens here. Waffles really needs to get his act together. He, he has, wow, he has a massive army of Thors, though. I take back what I said. These Thors are so damn good against Zerg. Uh, seriously, even with Magic Box, this is nowhere near enough Mutas to pick that off. And it looks like Broom will be uh, revealing his Mutalisks on the Supply Depot. Gonna send one forward to scout the area out. 
But he is going to be revealing his Mutalus, going to be picking off just a lonely Supply Depot for no really good reason. And we'll see what uh, Waffles does. He's going to be bringing his Triple Thor army back. Uh, one Missile Turret here, two Missile Turrets here. These Mutalus aren't going to be able to do much. And these three Thors here as well. There's pretty much saying, get the hell out of here. And these Mutalus would be wise to oblige. Uh, and get the heck out of that Terran main. So, uh, meanwhile, we do have a gold expansion trying to go up for Waffles. One Zergling here, gonna harass the SCVs building the the uh, missile turrets. And I, I do like this from Waffles, trying to throw up some missile turrets in advance uh, so that he can predict the Mutalist, which will be coming in sooner rather than later. And here comes some Lynx, gonna try to come in. Oh, but those Hellions, great micro. And at the same time, look at this, Broom gonna try to work down the backdoor rocks. And this is one thing I don't know if I talked about. Blistering Sands is such a hard map for Terran. When the Zerg player takes out these backdoor rocks, it becomes a living nightmare if you're a Terran player because now all of these units can flood in. The entire Terran mech, especially if the Terran army is mech, they're so immobile. The Zergling is now going to flood in straight to the main. These SCVs will not be able to harvest. And at the same time, we have another Zergling attack coming in straight for that gold expansion. So, a good double-pronged attack here from the Zerg player. Oh, man. I think Broom here could do a lot of damage. Focusing down the armory now. Is the upgrade going to get canceled? It's so close. Oh, the upgrade, I believe, gets canceled at the very last moment. And we still have more Zerglings and Banelings attacking. The Baneling picking off all the Hellions. Keep in mind, the Baneling does so much damage to Hellions. It's, it's quite amazing. And it looks like the Thor will not survive. Wow, that was close. <laughs> and... This is getting uh, to become very, very close. What the heck was that right there? Did I just see a bunch of Mutalists die? I I actually don't know where the Mutalists went. I'm assuming they just died to the Thors. We're seeing so many multi-pronged attacks here from Broom. I have to say, such brilliant play from both these players. Uh, uh, commending the Zerg for making these multi-pronged har uh, harass attacks. He canceled the armory upgrade as far as I know. Uh, the, yeah, look at that. The Terran army, they never got that uh, armor upgrade. So the Zerg army, Broom here making great attacks. He is just hitting where the Terran hurts and uh, I have so I have to also commend Waffles he's been making some great defensive plays I think he's gonna hold off these roaches very easily broom here I can't quite agree with attacking this planetary fortress not with those uh, Thors there and it looks like Waffles gonna make a counterattack now with his tanks and Thors he is going to try to go for this gold expansion but I do believe broom should be able to mobilize in time and defend that off uh, only three tanks and a Thor here I just want to take a look at the APM tab. Both 